Hi, it's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. Welcome to another edition of Q&A with a Coach. Today we have a question from our friend Glowin. Was that a character from the Lord of the Rings or the Hobbit? I think he was a dwarf, or was he a hobbit? I don't remember. He was a person of diminutive stature in that story. Anyway, Glowin, our hobbit or dwarf friend, he says, Hi, quick question about sparring intensity. Is it wise to regularly spar hard to the body? I've begun kickboxing and MMA, and we've done some body shot only sparring. It got me wondering if there's any long term damage from body shots that I should worry about. I don't mind some pain and light bruising, obviously, no rib cracking hits, but I'm worried if that would accumulate long term damage like regular medium hits to the head. I can't find much info about it online. Okay. Glowin. I keep thinking about dwarves and hobbits every time I say that name. Anyway, Glowin. So recently, I don't know if you've heard about this um, Australian professional boxer Dwight Ritchie. He died. He passed away after a sparring match in the gym to which he took a heavy body shot. And it's... It's not unusual to hear stories about boxers dying in the ring. It's happened a bunch of times over the years. This last year it happened too many times. Several. And, yeah, this, this Australian boxer. Man. <sighs> Rest in peace. He died in the gym during sparring and of a body shot of all things. And that's shocking because... Generally, people think body shots are safer than headshots. We all know at this point, or at least we all should know, that taking blunt force trauma to the brain causes brain damage. The more you get hit in the head, the more damage it's doing to your brain. And there are long-term ramifications to that. There are a bunch of studies out there conclusively proving this in case he were not aware or not um, or just a little too incredulous that the fact that getting punched in the head is bad for your head. Right, but the body's different. Our brain is not in our body, so, so what's going on there when we get hit? Well, the body is where the rest of your vital organs are. There's some important stuff in there that you kind of need to live. So, generally speaking, you're not going to experience long-term damage from body shots, what you can experience is immediate damage. Ruptured organs, for example. Damage to the liver, damage to the kidneys, a ruptured spleen. If you have an inflamed appendix and you might not know about it, pff, boom, ruptured appendix. Ever had one of those? I have. It's terrible. Oh, man, that can kill you. Remember Harry Houdini, the great magician? He was famous uh, as an escape artist. He would uh, put chains and locks all over him, put himself in a straitjacket, up hanging upside down in a, a glass case filled with water or something like that, and he would manage to escape. And he did a lot of these amazing feats through physical strength. A lot of people didn't know that. He was a strong, strong guy. Much, much stronger than the average person. And much stronger than he looked. Because he wasn't a giant man. But one thing Harry Houdini would do was he would ask people to punch him in the stomach to basically show how he was able to take any shot. And people would often come up to Harry Houdini and say, they, they would ask if they could hit his stomach, and they would, and he would take it like it was nothing, and they'd just be amazed, like, whoa, this, this seemingly non-imposing man can take any shot from anybody. It's like magic, right? Because he was a magician, of course. Now, he ended up dying of a ruptured appendix shortly after taking his very last body shot ever. Coincidence? We don't exactly know, because... Medical science and autopsies and all that weren't uh, as advanced back then as they are today. But coincidence, probably not. Inflamed appendix, heavy body shot, burst appendix. That's how that works. Now, did all those body shots lead up to an inflamed appendix? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. 
the doctors are still out about whether or not um, anything in particular causes appendicitis, whether it's stress or bacteria or whatever. We don't really know or understand that very well, just that sometimes it happens. I'm going to show you a short sparring clip. So I was sparring with, with my student Ali, and Ali is a very physically fit guy. This guy has so many visible abdominal striations, you could play the piano on him. It's just, you know, he's a well-built guy. Like, he is strong. He is strong, he is athletic, he has core strength to boot, right? So you, you would think a guy like this, with, with that much core strength, with abs that strong, would be able to take a body shot. And yeah, under most circumstances, yes. But in this particular sparring session, you can see right here, we're going really, really light. We're just barely tapping each other. And I bring up a knee right here. Really light knee, just lift it as he's moving forward. And what happened right there? Oh, that light contact knee became devastating. Just absolutely devastating because of the amount of tension held in his body at that particular moment. At any, at any given moment in a fight or a, even a light sparring session, we're always breathing, and when we breathe, we are contracting and releasing muscles in the abdomen and in the core. And we talk about correct breathing a lot in martial arts. Like when we strike, pa, ps, hum, hum, we exhale, and that tightens up our, our abdominal muscles. And if we breathe normally, if we hyperventilate, <gasps> What happens? Our abs get really relaxed. The midsection gets really soft. And those internal organs become much more subject to damage. Now, Dwight Ritchie, the boxer, he was a good boxer. He was a tough guy. He could take a shot. And man, if a body shot could lay him out, could kill him. You might want to think twice if you're not even at that level. Hmm. I'm a huge advocate of light sparring. Massive ad advocate of light sparring. 20 years ago, nobody that I trained with sparred light. It just, it just didn't happen. I mean, people would brush that off as, oh, that's not, even, that's not even real. That's not how you train to fight. You learn how to fight by fighting. You don't need to get beaten up every day in the gym. You don't. You don't need to be a punching bag for your sparring partners. When you know how to fight, you don't need to spar like that. If you know how to, sp how to fight, you don't need to spar like that. And if you don't know how to fight, you still don't need to spar like that. Save the power shots for the heavy bag. Save the power shots for the mitt work and the pad work. So yeah, body shots can kill you. Most of the time they don't, but if you experience internal bleeding or ruptured organs, that's a problem. Are there any studies about long-term damage, like maybe some scar tissue might start forming on the inside? I don't know. What I do know is that recently... Body shots killed a man in the gym, in sparring, with a training partner who presumably was not trying to murder his friend. What I do know is we're not made of glass, but we're not made of titanium either. You got to find the balance. And also, what does that teach you? going really hard to the body and really light to the head, it teaches you this very unbalanced game. Or if you only throw body shots or something like that, it teaches you a very lopsided game. Do you fight like that in real life? No. And you might say, well, you don't do like light sparring in real life. No, you keep it even, right? All you need to do to transition from light sparring to full contact sparring is squeeze your fist on impact. 
as opposed to keeping your hand open inside the glove. Put a little pepper on it. <clears throat> Put a little, little more energy into it. Put a little more explosion into it. And don't pull your punches. If you're doing the bag work like you should, ba ba ba, throwing those heavy full contact hits on the bags and on the pads, you are not a stranger to throwing full contact punches. If you've been in a few fights, you already know what a fight is. You already know how to fight, if you will. Whether you're good at it or not is another question. But developing this lopsided game that body shot sparring does, uh, I'm not a big fan of it. Not a big fan of that. I've tried it a number of times. I mean, I used to train an Olympic-style Taekwondo, and the only punches you're allowed to throw are to the body. You can throw kicks at the head or the body, but what happened to me is the same thing that happened to a lot of Taekwondo players when they try to transition to other combat sports like kickboxing. They tend to get their butts kicked because they have a very lopsided game. So don't cheat yourself out of excellence like that. If your ultimate goal is full contact fighting in the ring or in the cage. Become a well-rounded, well-balanced fighter. And body shot sparring? Uh, sometimes it's good to mix things up, but if you're trying to kill each other, thinking, I can damage this part of him, but not that part. Remember, once again, all the other vital organs except your brain that keep you alive and healthy and well are in your body. And if you're hammering away at those, what's happening on the inside? Is it a gentle massage? No. Nothing good is happening inside. Exercise caution, stay safe. Thank you for watching. Now get out there and train.